You know, we're all leading people somewhere. No matter what our role is, we're leading someone. But some of us are leading people on. Some of us are leading people astray. I mean, the aim is that we lead people onwards and upwards. But I think the question for today is, where have you led yourself over the last 90 days? Through some of the crisis, where have you been taking yourself? What have you said to yourself? What have you actually done inside of you? Have you been fun to live with? Have you been a joy to do the journey with? You know, we all give life to whatever we give our energy to. And we've got to make a decision that we're going to give energy, not just good intentions. We've got to put in energy and discipline. And that will allow us to continue to grow exponentially into difficult circumstances. We've got to create a pattern with the way that we put the habits into place. You know that people rarely fail in new ways. The old ways work just fine. The sum of our lives is the sum of our daily disciplines. What is it that you need to add into your daily disciplines to allow you to start to excel, propel? What do you do to make a really good habit last? Well, you just link it to another one, one that's already established in your life and you add one habit on top of another. And when we've got a whole series of habits, we've got a ritual. You know, athletes, they all have high-performance rituals. They have rituals that allow them to have pre-performance, post-performance, warm-up, warm-down. We need the rituals because the rituals give us rhythm and pattern. We need to figure out what is it that's going to enable us to move from where we are right now to where we want to be. Do you realise that if you were going to change your world really quickly, the thing that would change it fastest, the place where the habits would be most effective would be if you change your words. Change your words, you pretty much can change your whole world. Start saying something that matters and you will start finding that you're doing something that matters. Because you can't change what's coming out of your mouth unless you change what's going into your head and how you're processing it. I know a lot about words. I was born with my left eye permanently closed. The doctor started plastic surgery on me at age two. What that really means is they started to stitch my eye open for the next 10 years. Now, I didn't really realise I had a problem until I got to school. When I got to school, oh my goodness, the kids are so creative when it comes to name calling. They came up with a hundred awful names for me, but the two that were there nearly every single day were such simple words. Lisa, you are so ugly. Lisa, you look so dumb. Do you realise that just those two little words were just imprinted into my being. I remember running home from school, just throwing myself into my mother's arms and saying, Mum, it's not fair. I didn't do this to myself. My beautiful mother, who was a 13th child raised by her grandmother, who knew all about life not being fair, just grabbed my little face and pulled me in really close. And then she said, sweetheart, Life's not fair. I said, but that's not fair. She said, correct. She said, if you don't like it, don't do it to others. I said, that's not fair. She said, you can't change the world, but you could make it a little fairer for someone else. You could make it a little fairer for the girl that sits next to you, or maybe for the little boy that sits behind you. And how about even the little girl in front of you? What if we just made it fairer for those three? You see, my mother made sure I would never be a victim. She was going to teach me how to be victorious, regardless of the handicaps or the disabilities in my life. She was always refocusing me from what 
we thought was wrong to what I could do right. You understand, you've got to know what you've got in your hands. You've got to know what words you've got in your mouth. What tools have you got in your toolkit to become a force of growth, a force of someone that's moving forward. You see, words can hold you back. Words can build a bridge. Words can build a pathway forward. Words can actually build incredibly intimate relationships. Look, if you're not sure, you could just stop for a minute and hold your tongue. Try and say, I am a person of great influence and integrity while you hold your tongue. I am a person of great influence and integrity. <laughs> As you can see, it's a slippery little rascal. It's so hard to hold your tongue. And we all know that we've got things in our head that we want to say, but in actual fact, if they, the words come out, they build nothing. So my beautiful parents as I stood there and said, life's not fair, she just said, you know what? Your father and I, we think you're very smart. Smart. Pretty would have been better, but smart wasn't bad. And I just started to embrace that word. And the kids would say, you're dumb and you're ugly. And I would say quietly to myself, but I'm smart. My mum says so. I said it hundreds and hundreds of times throughout my schooling. That became a catch cry for me, a mantra, a phrase that enabled me, build me up and not tear me down. Do you have one of these phrases for yourself? Do you realise that the most powerful words that you will ever hear in your whole life are not the words that you hear from other people? The most powerful words you will ever hear in your whole life are the words you say to yourself about yourself. These are the words that start to define us. These are the words that start to attract our thinking and we move in the direction of our most dominant thought. So we've got to make sure that we've got some very clear thoughts about us. Words can make you or break you, can build you up or tear you down. Words, I mean, it's words that I build intimacy with my husband. And it's words that I use to build self-belief into my children. And it's words that I use to build trust with my work colleagues. I mean, words, they are the tool of trade and you can change them in an instant. None of us are powerless. What words matter most? What are the words that you should be saying? What words should you be adding into your vocabulary so that your vocabulary becomes powerful? You know, an example, what do you say when you're really angry? I mean, do you just say things you wish you didn't say? I was saying something when someone cut me off on the freeway and my two little kids in the back seat of my car just repeated it perfectly. Oh, I thought that's not going to work for my family. I thought, what am I going to say when I'm angry? A and I started to use this word fascinating. Isn't that fantastic? Look at that driver. Isn't he fascinating? Like four syllables, takes me a little while to breathe through it, and it makes me laugh every time I say it. And heavens knows I am sometimes the fascinating driver. So fascinating is a way to diffuse my anger and fuel myself with a tool that allows me to speak life into the situation. What about when you make a mistake? You know, that's something that someone else does. But what about when you've made the mistake? Like with high-performing athletes, I know that recovery is the most important thing for an athlete. The speed at which they can recover is the speed at which they will excel. I mean, long-term success comes from the ability to recover fast. Words, how do we get these words to recover fast? Well, I grew up with two brothers, professional tennis players that we learned that the minute we made a mistake, that was the key time to use the power phrase. And the power phrase was, that's not like me. See that? A correction and an encouragement in just a few words. Try it on yourself. That's not like me. 
Yeah, and you know, when you get really good at it, you start being able to use it with your partner and your kids. Oh, that's not like you. Love it when you're in the in your workplace and you see someone gossiping in the corner and you say, hey, Max, that's not like you. It's a lovely way to correct and encourage without bringing any offence. So I want you to just get these phrases in, fascinating, that's not like me. And maybe one other little phrase which is excellent is learning to apologise. I call it the chasm closer. Let me tell you what the marriage counsellor directed us to do when we were sorry. I mean, I thought I'm sorry was okay, but she said, no, 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 get serious, Lisa. She said, when you're really sorry, you say this, I'm sorry, I was wrong, and you were right. Yeah, it's like chewing glass. <laughs> it is so hard to say, and yet... It's what stops an argument dead in its tracks. You take full responsibility for everything you've said or done. You apologise. It's awesome. I want you to practise it. Just try it to yourself. Just roll it around in your mouth. I'm sorry. I was wrong and you were right. And try not to mix that up. Do you realise that the words that you're throwing out are actually coming back at you. You're investing into people with every word you speak. You know, we build people up because we choose to do what? We choose to start to encourage them. You know, I want to tell you that when I very first spoke in the United States, I spoke in a very big stadium that was a basketball stadium. And it was one of those ones where the people sit all the way up on the sides of the walls and right across the floor. And I was laughing at the fact that I'm trying to tell the Americans that words are like boomerangs, that what you throw out with your mouth is going to come back at you. So if you're going to encourage people, that's, if you've got courage inside of you, you express it. And every time you throw it out, it boomerangs back at you. And compliments, they're a boomerang too. Every time you throw out a compliment, it boomerangs back. What's a compliment? You just say what you see. You get good at noticing what people do well and you mention it and you mention it publicly because encouragement comes along with the compliment. At Now respect, that's a brilliant boomerang. Every time you throw out please, thank you, may I, you know, don't give commands. Make requests. You throw it out. And that respect boomerangs back to you. These boomerangs are investments into everyone that is in your circle of influence. Well, I started to do this action in front of the Americans and they started to chant, throw it, throw it, throw it. I looked at my husband who was in the front row and all the blood drained out of his face. I thought, don't look at me like that. You know I'm not going to throw it. Besides, I've never thrown a boomerang before. And I just paid $7 at the airport for a bit of painted wood. I mean, I knew it wouldn't fly, but the audience didn't. The audience got so enamoured with my idea that they all stood up, stomped their feet and clapped. Throw it, throw it, throw it. I panicked. I'm trying to tell them they've got to stop. And I'm just shaking my head. And the next thing I knew, it just launched out of my hand. Everybody watched as the boomerang went over their head. And nobody was more surprised than me when it started to come back at me. It did the biggest loop of the stadium I could have ever imagined. And someone from seven rows in the front caught it. All the blood drained out of my face. I could have killed somebody. Have you ever known something's really dumb and done it a second time? See, that's the point with our words. If we're going to be brave, we've got to learn to take out the words that kill effort. We've got to put in the words that bring effort. And we've got to make sure that we're creating a brave new future with every word we speak. Thank you.